In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use the fantastic new multi-layer flower stamp and die from John Next Door to make the beautiful flowers as you see here on the card that we demoed in another demonstration. And the multi-layer flower is designed to give you two tones or shades of flower or look within one easy stamping and cutting system. So I'm gonna move that out of the way and I'll bring in the stamp and the die. The stamp this time is slightly narrower than normal, but you're getting two. So you're getting one to give you one colour, one to give you another, and you get a third colour with your base card. You also get the die to cut this out and the die is designed again to fit exactly over and it uses the notches on the corner to line it up. So there's absolutely no difficulty in lining this up whatsoever. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to stamp this to start with. So I'm going to stamp my flower to start with. So I open my stamp press and I'm using the Crafts 2 linen card for this. By using the linen card, having that beautiful texture on it, it adds more texture to your flower. So it, the ink won't go completely in. It will sit on the surface, giving you this beautiful sort of shaded look of it. So what we do is you need to make sure there are two stamps in this set. And the first colour you want to stamp is the largest stamp. So this has the flat area and the smallest centre, as opposed to the second stamp, which has more detail in it and has a, a larger centre area. So we're simply going to place that down as we would do normally. Pick it up with our lid. I'm going to stamp this in the lighter shade. So whichever colours you're using for this, you want to use the lightest shade first. So for this one, I'm using Verbena, which is one of the Eyes Ink Inchies sort of mini inks. So I'm just going to ink the stamp as I would do normally. And we'll press it down. Now, because I'm using the linen card, I will get all of the texture from the linen showing forward, which I think looks beautiful on the flower. Can you see there? I'm getting that linen texture. OK, and what we need to do then is remove that first stamp. And what I tend to do is stamp a whole series of them. And then I'm going to place on top the next layer. Now, if you look through, because they're clear stamps, you can easily see through where you're lining it up. So you can see exactly where you're lining it up and make sure I'm covering all of the green. And if you are a little bit off, the die will cut a little bit extra off. So you will get away with that. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use a little bit of a dark blue ink. So this one is Nui, which is night again from the Eyes Ink dye inks. And I want a real contrast. So I'm just going to stamp that on. The top and what you may find with the dark colour you may want to do that twice to give the difference and what I'm going to do for this one to give a little bit of difference I'm going to swatch colours and I'm going to use the Outremer so I've got that darker blue behind and the mix with this sort of mid blue really really works so we just stamp that on top and you can see there I've got the white going to the green going to a sort of sort of nighttime blue colour and it's got some of the green showing through so you get a really really nice colour with that. If I bring it a little bit closer you can see there you've got that real effect of the colours changing and if you use coloured card in the base then you'll easily get three shades running through it. So all I need to do next is to line the die up so the die is very simple. You've got these two corners that we've stamped here and here and all we're going to do is line up the die with those two corners and you can actually see through the die to the stamped image just to make sure obviously if you're off a little bit you'll see it straight away but line up the corners and then simply tape that die down and make sure you tape it in a couple of places because you don't want it to move and we run that through our die cutting machine so I'll pop the top plate on and I'll run that through my die cutting machine OK, so that's been through and it's really very simple now. We just pop out the four individual flowers. And if you can see there, we've got those beautiful individual flowers all cut with no white showing around the edge. And it would be very difficult to do this with scissors and it's very difficult to line up individual dies. It's so much easier like this. So we're simply going to shape those. So I'm using here, this is the Crafts 2 
flower molding foam because it's extremely firm. You want a very firm one and I'm using one of the ball tools from the Blossom kit and I'm using size four, which is the fourth largest in that. Doesn't really matter, but all we're going to do to shape these, very simple, push in the middle. And if you notice each of the five petals pops up straight away. So those pop petals just pop up and gives us a really nice 3D flower. And you can add centers into these using stamens, using embossing powders, glitters, microbeads, all the crafts to, or craft artist pollen in there. What I'm going to do on these ones is just add a little bit of uh, enamel in the center in a bluey color. So very simply, just to add to that extra interest. But if you look at some of the samples that have been made either on the show or on Facebook, you'll see there's some beautiful ones with stamens and things in there. So we'll pop those to one side to dry for a couple of minutes. And we want to do some leaves to go with this. So for the leaves, I'm going to use the exotic leaves from John Next Door, which are matched exactly with it. And I want to show you a different technique doing with these. So. We're going to take, first of all, our die cutting plates. So you want all of your base plates. We're going to put down a piece of scrap card. I'm using some watercolour card here. And simply place your dies on top. So in this set, there are seven dies. So I'm just going to place those on top, very simply. And then I'm going to take the inks that I used. So I use the Verbena, I use the Outremer, and I use the Knight. And I'm using dye ink. And normally when we're doing this technique and we're trying to do a letterpress technique, we use a pigment ink because it sticks better. But because we want different colours showing through on this, we're going to use dye ink. It gives us a lot shadier, more watercolour look. So all I'm going to do is randomly go over, first of all, with the green. And I'm really pressing to get some into the metal. I'm then going to go with the next lightest shade, which is the Outremer. And it doesn't matter with the eyes ink ink, because these are designed to non-contaminate, you don't have to worry about going over with different colours. If you are using other inks, just be a little bit careful and make sure you definitely go light to dark. So I've put those on just in sort of squares and blobbed it down. And then all I simply need to do is to add a piece of card over the top of this. So again, I'm using the linen card to continue that texture. And I just tape the card to the board so that the card doesn't move. So I'm going to tape that at the top and at the bottom and effectively I've created a sandwich. So I'm just going to run that one through. So I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. So they've been run through the die cutting machine. As you can see there, they've all cut. I simply peel off the top sheet and you'll see we'll start to get the leaves out. Really, really very simple, but a beautiful effect. So I'll pull these out, but as you can see there, we're getting that beautiful mix of the colours, but very sketchy, as I say, almost a watercolour-y look. On the more solid flowers or leaves, you get a really nice look because you've actually got, if I show you here, you've actually got all of those deboss lines have impressed in with a more solid colour. So we get the sketchy background with the beautiful solid lines in there. So I'm just going to take those out. We'll just shape those. And each one will be different and individual. And every time you do this, you'll get a different look, which is, I think is a great way to stretch some of your foliage dies to make them look different. And with this one, I'm just going to pinch each petal downwards. You can do it over a pokey tool if you want to, but just literally Pinch each petal to make it look a little bit more realistic. And the final one there. So we're just going to arrange these together and I'll show you how the colours match really, really well together. So I've got a little card blank I've made here using one of the layers from the fantastic Harlequin press cut multi-layer set. And I've put this against some of the green so that the green really lifts through. And all I'm going to do is make an arrangement of my leaves. And I always find it's better to make an arrangement of the leaves first so that you've got a base for your flowers to go on to, certainly with the Calypso flowers. So we'll just pop this one in. And then I'm just simply going to add my flowers into the centre. 
So I think I'll use three. I'll use the largest, the medium, and the smallest. And we just pop those in, and then you can fill in any gaps that you want to. And I'm just going to snip this little bit off here. I tend to snip this little tail off. We'll glue it later. We'll pop that in. And there we've got a beautiful spray of multi-stamped, multi-layer flowers with the beautiful exotic leaves. And I bring in the original. There we've got a different colour shade again. But very simple and easy to do. And I timed it. It takes about 10 minutes to actually cut, cut and stamp four full sets of these. So you can really go to town with them and make it look like you spent hours on a project.